Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Hey there, I'm Stephen Feuerstein. I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. And what I want to talk about right now is what I consider to be the number one issue and the number one best practice for writing really great code. And it's a really simple thing to say. Never repeat anything. If you can absorb that message and figure out all the different ways that it manifests in your code, repetitions, and the ways to get rid of repetitions, you will have amazingly clean code, code that's easy to read, code that is easy to maintain. Never repeat anything. Now, avoiding repetition syncs up really closely with another concept in programming which people are pretty well familiar with hard coding. And the, the corollary of never repeat anything is never hard code anything. So what I'd like to do is talk about hard coding, show you a piece of code that is filled with hard codings, and hopefully expand your mind and maybe blow your mind a little bit about what actually constitutes hard coding in a piece of software. So let's take a look at this program, Process Employee. It consists of uh, 33 lines of, of code. It's very small and it is absolutely packed with hard codings. So what I'm gonna do is simply go line by line through this program and point out what I consider to be hard codings. And then I'm gonna come back and dive into each one of those different kinds of hard codings and talk about why they're so bad and how to get rid of them. And some of them, as you're gonna see, are not as bad as others. Line one, process employee. So what I'm doing is passing in a single parameter, department ID number. And the hard coding in that line is the hard coding of the data type. I'm saying it is and will always be a number. Because of course the core concept of hard coding is that I've assumed that something's not gonna change so I can expose its implementation. I can say, here's how it's defined. Here's the underlying details of this thing. And I can do it in more than one place because it's never going to change. So department ID hard coded as a data type of number. Now we'll, we'll come back and talk about is that a big deal or not? but that's a hard coding. Same thing for line three, line four, line five. These are all explicitly declared data types using base data types like number and varchar two. And most importantly on lines four and five, constrained declarations. So I'm saying last name or the full name, L name, can be at most 100 characters long. It's never gonna get to be bigger than that. That's what the code actually says. It's, it's never gonna get bigger than 100 characters. That's a pretty big assumption to make. And that's one of the other problems with our code related to hard coding and repeating things is we make assumptions. But focusing on the hard codings, let's keep going. Line seven, a comment. A comment, hard coding, yes. That comment is a hard coding because it's hard coding the rule. How do I construct the full name of an employee? Last comma first. And look, there's a reference to the document, the requirements document. I'm actually saying where this came from. That's a pretty good idea, but I'm repeating the rule. What if the document changes? Then I have to go change this too? So that's a hard coding. Line 10, in which I'm selecting three different expressions, the employee ID, the salary, and then I'm constructing the full name. I'm basically taking the uh, rule that's defined in line seven, back in the requirements document, and I'm expressing it as code. And I'm doing it that way because, well, it's so easy to do. Last comma, for, what could be easier? So I'll just do it there and there and there and there and there all over the place. So moving along into the body of my program, the executable section, line 17 contains a very interesting, uh, sort of trivial hard coding, at least trivial in its resolution, but potentially problematic in terms of my code. So what could be hard coded about fetching a cursor, the next row of my cursor, into three individual variables? Well, the key word is three. What I've done is hard code into this fetch statement a dependency back on the select statement. What I'm saying in my code on line 17 is this cursor will always return three different expressions. And I'll drop them into these three different variables, which I've previously declared using hard coded data types. It's quite a little train of thought or code there. So the hard coding is what if the select statement changes? What if I add another column or expression? Then I have to change the fetch statement. So there's a dependency, there's a hard coding. Lines 19 and lines 24, well, those are probably the examples of hard coding that your eye immediately went to when you saw this code because it stands out with a different color and it's also a literal value. And as software programmers, even the most beginner among us 
knows that you're not supposed to hard code literal values because that's the sort of thing that can change all the time. But we do it anyway. We'll talk about how to get rid of it. It's actually the easiest form of hard coding to remove from your code. Unfortunately, also the most common. But in this case, there are actually two hard codings on line 19, two of them in one line. One of them is the number itself. The other is the expression, L salary greater than 10 million. Though it's not explicit in this piece of code, clearly, there's an, an odd little rule in my company that says, to be the CEO, you gotta make more than $10 million. That's the rule. And if you make more than $10 million, you must be the CEO. So the literal itself is hard-coded and probably likely to change and not go down, and go up. But the other part of the hard-coding is the expanded formula. As with line 10, where I expose the formula, how do you get the last name, the full name of an employee? On line 19, I'm, I'm explaining how do I figure out if this person is the CEO. So I'm exposing the implementation, hard coding it. Moving on to line 24, we have another example of the hard coded literal. I'm repeating the 10 million. I assume that the analyzed competition procedure has as its third argument what is the boundary, the floor that defines the CEO salary. Again, implicitly, there is the rule expressed. Moving on down to line 28, commit. Yes, I do believe that commit is a form of hard coding. It's a different kind of hard coding than, say, the hard coding of a rule, but it's performing a similar uh, role in my code. If I hard code a rule, I'm exposing the implementation. When I hard code a commit, I'm hard coding and exposing my transaction boundaries. I'm saying at this point, I'm gonna save my changes and there's no going back. And of course, you're saying to yourself, well, Stephen, that's what commit is supposed to do. That's the whole point. I agree. That's why I'm saying it's a bit different from the others. The difference here is that I lose flexibility around testing, particularly around testing when I hard code commits. And we'll explore that in a bit more detail. Moving down to the bottom, then line 32, we've got several different hard codings again. Some of them will be obvious to you, perhaps. The fact that I'm hard coding my error message. I'm hard coding my error number. Those, I think, would stand out immediately. But one other point around hard coding here is the raise application error invocation. I'm hard coding the mechanism I'm using to raise an error. And again, you might say, well, yeah, but that's what I have to do because I need to raise this application specific error. Maybe, but maybe there's a better way to call raise application error and hide it from this layer of code. So 33 lines of code, I don't know, 10, 12 different forms of hard coding. And there's a lot more that we can and will explore. But that should give you a sense of a different way of looking at your code, a different way of understanding the kind of pitfalls that we can inadvertently enter into as we write our code. And next, we'll explore the ways to resolve all these hard codings.